You are listening to MCC Votes and Seats, the podcast series of the Center for Political Science of Matthias Corvinus Collegium. We provide election insights with experts and politicians. Ladies and gentlemen, dear listeners, welcome everyone at today's Votes and Seats podcast. Today we will talk about the French legislative election, the second round of which was held last Sunday. And we have today Mr. Thibault Giblin, research fellow at MCC. Thank you for uh, accepting our invitation. Hello. My name is Szabolcs Janik. I am a researcher at the Center for Political Science here at MCC. My first question would be, what is the political significance of a legislative election in uh, France? Because uh, I'm quite sure that everybody knows it's a semi-presidential system which you have in France. And uh, I'm, I'm also quite sure that uh, most people can name your president in office, but not, for example, not your prime minister or even other ministers in the government uh, of France. So why is it important? Why does it matter what happened uh, last Sunday? It's really important indeed to explain for Hungarian listeners that your election happened only in one round for the legislative election and after they elect, the members of parliament elect uh, the prime minister. In France, we have three different votes. Two run for the presidential election, and let's say four because two run as well for the legislative election. And in France, this is the elected president that choose the, the government from the legislative elections. In the beginning of the Fifth Republic, the system was a bit different because the president had a seven years mandate and the parliament was renewed every five years. So it means a very important difference that, that the president, that was the case for François Mitterrand and then for uh, Jacques Chirac, that they didn't have a majority in the parliament and so they should choose the prime minister in the opposition. And they wanted to avoid this situation because it's really difficult to build a coherent politics without this harmony between the executive power and the legislative power. So the reform was achieved under the term of Jacques Chirac that the term of the president will be reduced to five years. And now we have this coherence. And this is basically the rule from 2002, for 20 years it works like that, that the success of the elected president was so uh, significant and a call for a support in the legislative election that followed. And uh, indeed, Jacques Chirac had this majority in 2002, Nicolas Sarkozy in 2007, François Hollande in 2012, and Emmanuel Macron in 2017. But... This year, there is a big change, and this is all the interest of our talk today. Emmanuel Macron had an obvious success at the presidential election because he was opposed to a right-wing populist candidate, Marine Le Pen. And there is so far a very strong opposition between left-wing populist and right-wing populist. They cannot support each other. What was the choice of Jean-Luc Mélenchon, this left-wing leader, to support Macron to support this liberal bourgeoisie opponent because the allegedly far right should be uh, defeated at all costs. But there was not real popular support in favor of Emmanuel Macron. And this is why we have the very interesting result of the legislative election that I think we will discuss later in our conversation. Yeah, of course. And uh, turning to the concrete results of the election, we can see four political blocks or, or groups competing for the votes. One is definitely Ensemble, Macron's alliance, center-right, center-left, maybe you, you will say a few words about it. We have NUPS, the center-left or the left as such as a whole. We have UDC, which is also a right-center block as far as I can understand. And we have the national rally led by Marine Le Pen. And uh, if we look at the final results of the election, we see uh, Ensemble coming first with 245 seats, which is uh, not enough for an absolute majority. We see uh, NUPS coming second with 131 seats in the assembly. National rally coming third with 89 seats. And uh, UDC 
with 64 seats in the National Assembly. And as I already mentioned, we cannot see an absolute majority on Macron's alliance side. What does this mean practically? What will happen now? We could uh, also hear that uh, the Prime Minister Elizabeth Bourne submitted her resignation, which Macron did not accept, in order to ensure stability and the continual work of the government. But uh, and also the the negotiations with Macron on uh, forming a new government had already started with other party leaders. So where are we now and what could be the consequences of this process? Yesterday, uh, Macron gave an address to French people at the French TV. It was a short one, only 10 minutes. He explained that the responsibility of any mess, let's say, in the institution of any instability, uh, that, that would be on the responsibility of the opposition's party. Uh, and that he called for unity. So he's waiting for the proposal of these opposition parties to take part to the in life of the institutions and to, to unite around him, finally. So normally, the government should propose and discuss with the opposition's party. Here, this is the, the way around. He's waiting for the uh, submission of these successful opposition parties. Of course, the situation ahead of us is very difficult in France. During five years, Macron had a huge supermajority and this control over the institutions did not save him from trouble from the street, from the, in the social contest during these five years. Now there will be strong opposition parties in the parliament to develop and increase and explain to the people why they should contest, why they should stand up, and the state of the economy will be much worse in the coming years than in the past years. So the situation is very interesting politically because, of course, it's unstable. What's happened during this election? Ensemble well, is the, the first coalition, and they, they have uh, 245 seats, but it's 106 seats less than five years ago. So this is a huge loss. And this is how we can observe that Macron, even if he was re-elected, he is not popular and he has no strong implementation really in the country. Second come, uh, is the NUPES. What, is, what sounds strange at the first sight, because why this leftist coalition arrive in the second position when Marine Le Pen, national rely on the right-wing tendencies, came first at the presidential election. First, NUPES, it's a coalition of 16 parties. So you have all the, and you, you say center-left, no, it's rather far-left. Among the 16 parties, you have the Communist Party, you have various kind of really radical uh, green <laughs> ecologist parties that have, I think, a radical approach, and not to solve problem, but just to have a, the vision of uh, the ecology as a redemption. And in order to punish the devilish uh, industrial countries we used to be. Uh, so th this is real ideological pattern, what they have. But they represent a large amount of parties. It's true that there is a leftist sensibility in France as well, of course. And Jean-Luc Mélenchon, the leader of the France Insoumise, the most important of these left-wing parties, achieved an excellent campaign. He campaigned from the very first day saying, I will be your prime minister. And if you elect me as prime minister, we will stop Macron in the, the liberal sense of its politics. But finally, when we observe in the detail this coalition, the first party is the Rassemblement National. Before the France Insoumise of Jean-Luc Mélenchon, just you have such a large amount of parties in this coalition that altogether they have a significant place in the national parliament. For me, the most significant aspect of this election is the success of the Rassemblement National. They were excluded from the institution for many decades. They had no right to be represented. Only once, in 1886, there was a proportional election. They, reformed, they changed the electoral law. The Front National at that time, that was the name, under the presidency of the father of Marine Le Pen, get 35 members. There was new election in 1988, and they reached into zero members. And now there were eight members over five 
177 seats. So it was this very tiny proportion. And now they are 89. They jump from 8 to 89 seats. It's extremely significant. So what is more significant is how did it happen? There is no change in the electoral law. There was this duel, Rassemblement National against the left or Rassemblement National against the center. And in 89 consistency, the, the French voters decided for the Rassemblement National. It means that there is no anymore what they call the Republican bow, the union of every party in France against the national rally. It means that the end in a lot of constituencies, uh, you had a um, very high result for the Rassemblement National from 45 to, to 49. So it means that they can increase their, their result. And the situation of Macron now is extremely difficult because there is a, a way to contest its politics from the left and from the right. Even for the top of these two parties, it may happen that the, now there is such a large number of members on both sides that it could have new alliance new dynamic in French politics. The political life in France is much more open than ever in the 50 last years. Listening to you and looking at the results, we can see that this uh, left bloc was uh, one of the winners of uh, this legislative election and, of course, national rally. And uh, what were their campaign messages? What were their topics with, uh, with which they could mobilize their voters and uh, who could finally deliver them this uh, good result and what did the uh, ensemble do wrong actually and what what didn't work as Macron and the other parties in his bloc uh, campaigned with i think that first mistake of Emmanuel Macron he was extremely satisfied after the second round of the presidential election he expressed this satisfaction in a very open way. It was like, okay, now I have five more years to achieve what I want to achieve. And nothing could be posed to me because it's based on my result that people decided to re-elect me. He thanked the, all the voters, all the parties with an, an, an arrogant behavior. And that, that was not a very good start to prepare the legislative election. Second, it was very difficult for him to choose this prime minister, Elizabeth Bourne, and there was a um, big challenge in his closer team to know who would be the good candidate. The time there was obvious contestation, and this choice, Elizabeth Bourne, is maybe not the best considering the, the marketing of the election. And this is an old and very severe lady. She's not well known. She has no success. Could uh, show how the, the dynamic of this second term is positive. And other very important aspect was the final of the Champions League that happened in north in Paris, in uh, Saint-Saint-Denis. This final competition should happen in Petersburg, in Russia. But due to the war in Ukraine, France welcomed the event. And our listeners maybe know that Saint-Saint-Denis is the name of the department north of Paris. And in Saint-Denis are uh, buried the French kings for 14 centuries. So it's a deep historical place. But in the same time, this is one of the most concentrated area in France with migrants. There is a huge unsafety in this area. And I mean, the event was a disaster considering the safety of the supporters. And this was what we call, you know, bad buzz. There was a very loud deception from French that uh, our country is showed as unsafe unable just to organize a sportive event. And um, the, the minister of the interior accused the English supporters of being aggressive, violent. Uh, and of course, it was not English people that was responsible for this situation, but the local, the people living in the neighborhood. And that was this kind of element that was very in favor of the Rassemblement National, for instance, that is at the forefront of this question of security and public safety. Why the NUPES has success? This is a very interesting other question. I think it's, uh, it shows the, the direction of this, the public debate in the coming month, largely due to the demagogy. 
they say that they will, they will rise the minimum wage by 1,500 euros. They will keep the age for retirement at uh, 16. Uh, they will provide everything more to everyone and they will make it possible with taxes and really typically socialist leftist way of governing. This is something that could be appreciated. Finally, the workers doesn't vote really for the NUPES, for the leftist. The NUPES candidates, most of them are from the superior class, so from the bourgeoisie. And they are. this is the biggest proportion, more than the Ensemble Coalition, of course, than the Rassemblement National and even from the Républicain, the center-right. They are 61% of the candidates from the upper class. So it's rather an artificial and intellectual leftist mindset that we can solve everything through taxes and socialism. French, they are not really interested anymore in politics because they don't believe in politics as something able to change their life. So if it seems easy and affordable, they will make this, uh, this choice. But the first party in France by far is the abstentionist. And what did the Le Pen's bloc campaign with? Can we just uh, say, okay, their voters are also Eurosceptic, for example, and that's the whole story, or are there something else? How do economic arguments come into play on uh, Le Pen's side and the right-wing side? Let's be very honest. The National Rally did not campaign. Elmas did not campaign. First, because Mélenchon took the leadership of the opposition with this claim, I will be your prime minister. And the Rassemblement National had the, the fear that what happened uh, five years ago. From beginning of May, so during all the, the campaign, the polls indicate that the Rassemblement National would get from 13 to 50 seats. And of course, we imagine that it's, it will be in between, so it will be around 30, 40, 35, 40 seats. And that, that was a huge deception that finally they gather 30 million of votes at the second round of presidential election, but they are unable to have a representation in the national parliament. And I think somehow they were, they were fed up and desperate. It's, I think, that the reality campaign for them, just because the leftist, as I explained, there was a strong demagogist vision and there is something typical in the left side nowadays. They said they hate policemen. They hate the, the one in charge of keeping order. They are full of this ideological bias coming from North America about the structural racism, the gender equality. So this is very artificial and ideological way of turning the political debate. And the Rassemblement National just stay out of that tendencies. So they represent the silent majority and they were silent themselves. But apparently it was enough to reach uh, 89 seats. For observers, it was difficult to expect such a success for the Rassemblement National. And even, maybe it's not a success. Maybe this is the minimum uh, due to the, the situation of France today, that they, they get at least 18% of the seats. Uh, maybe that if they would campaign, they would assume that they represent the Senate majority and they, 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 they should be the majority as well in the institutions. Maybe it would jump the result from 90 seat, uh, over 90 seat to 200. But who knows? Future is open. As for the turnout at the election, we saw that in the first round, a bit more than 47% of the voters voted, actually. And in the second round, we saw 46.2% voting. In the first round, it was a drop in the uh, turnout compared to 2017, while in the second round, there was some kind of uh, increase compared to five years ago. What explained this apathy of the voters? Because it was lower in the first round. Uh, what happened? Are French people fed of politics, politicians? Of course, of course. Uh, the, I think this is a situation quite general all over the Western world, that the, the, there is a deception about the official speech about the proclaimed values, about the allegedly what is good and what is, what is bad. I think that in France, it's maybe more significant, precisely because we have this kind of Republican monarchy and the power seems really far above the people. When the people vote after for five years, they know that they have no influence on their leaders and that any choice that they could have for the election the evolution of the country is quite 
stable in a bad sense for decades. What is even more significant for France is that finally this electoral system was born partially in France. So it means that there is a contestation in the really inner circle of this uh, Western liberal democracy. It's not the same thing like Central Europe that knows that the popular democracy under the Soviet influence, that, that was a cheating political system. Uh, and so people may be skeptical about the system because they feel that there is a lack of legitimacy. In France, people are very confident that they are at the top of the progress, that they are the light of democracy, etc. And precisely in France, we have for our legislative election 46% turnout, instead of in Hungary, it's over 70%. So question of legitimacy is the key. And even more interesting that in 2017, the legitimacy was worse because uh, Rassemblement National and France Insoumise, Mélenchon, together were more than 40% of voters for the presidential election at the first round. But in the national parliament, they were all together, there were 7% of the seats. So uh, now it's different. Now both left-wing populist and right-wing populist had massive presence in the, in the parliament. But what will be the result of that? Will uh, Emmanuel Macron and the institution of the of Republic, the Constitutional Council of all these institutions that supervise the democratic life, will they hear from the proposals and the fear of expressed by this member of parliament? That's not sure. So maybe that the skepticism of French citizens will be even worse if after a few months, few years, this massive presence in the national parliament do not indicate any shift in the way the country is ruling in the, the dynamic of our economical life, of our cultural uh, future, of our what does it mean to be French. Seeing the results of the elections, what is your opinion? What could be the most probable scenarios? What will happen now in terms of forming a new government? What are the possible coalitions? Which of these parties can and party leaders can Macron persuade to support a new government and agree on a new prime minister or the old prime minister, maybe in a new newly formed uh, government? What are the chances now? And if uh, someone from the opposition would have majority behind uh, his or her back and uh, an opposition government would be formed and there would be cohabitation. What would happen to Macron and uh, he beat his, uh, beat his plans? There is, I think, one option. There is a probability that the right and the center, which get uh, 61 seats, would make an alliance with uh, Ensemble. And because together they have a majority. Macron uh, needs uh, 40, 45 seats to, to more to get a majority. So with this Republican, it may work. For them, it's a very dangerous uh, bet because, of course, they will enter the government, they will have advantages and so on, but the situation in France will be extremely complicated in the coming month and maybe that will finally destroy these uh, center and right parties. Why? because they decline a lot. Today, they have 61 seats. It means they lost 51 seats compared to 2017. And in the same time, the Rassemblement National jumped from 8 to 89. So we see that there is a replacement in the political life that what used to be the right, it's now the Rassemblement National. And what is now the center right it's something around Macron in the periphery. You maybe remember that the prime minister of uh, Emmanuel Macron was Edouard Philippe. And Edouard Philippe came from the right. And for this election, he had uh, its own party, Horizon, which with some constituencies, but he was within the alliance ensemble. So few people already in the right, in the center, are a part of this central consensus. That was the same for the Parti Socialiste. You know, the Socialist Party was the base of En Marche. Even we can say that, that uh, En Marche is the new name of the Socialist Party somehow, uh, because the Socialist Party itself do not exist anymore. 
the option is this alliance, the, the, this extension of the center to center right. And, but it means that I think in the in the coming month, in the coming years, maybe this uh, coalition, this uh, party will dis- be destroyed, and some of the really right wing people in the Republican will join the National Rally. This is uh, may, the most possible tendency. There is another option that finally this party f- uh, feel that if he accept a, an alliance with Macron, he will lost all this autonomy. And uh, this is a pure condemnation to death in the, for, for the next uh, elections. So maybe they will just try to make a strategic partnership specifically for one vote for for. for sp- very dedicated to, to specific situations in order they could save their independence. For sure, the best strategy for uh, Rassemblement National and NUPS is to stand firm on the principle and to contest what Macron is achieving due to what the voters expect from them. And so they will maybe increase, there will be the real position, they will increase their prestige and their influence over French politics. I'm sure that they, they foresee, they, they, can, they can guess that if they do what Macron proposed, national un- union government, they will be finally the losers and, and Macron will keep all the, the initiative because you know that in France, the presidential authority and power is so large that as soon as you have a majority of seats in the parliament, you can do basically everything you want. And my last question would be, how much time could this take to have a new government in France and see the very final result of this political situation and process? So traditionally in France, the legislative election happening in June, you have the really calm time until September. And political life restarts really in September with all the new institutions and, and dynamic build up during the spring. Of course, it's impossible to guess precisely what uh, Macron could achieve because this is a surprise what happened for him. Macron, two months ago, was sure that he will just renew the, the parliament and with this, not maybe the same advantage, but of course, a full majority in the parliament. So this is a nightmare for him. And there is not a lot of option. So maybe it will be a continuing situation during the summer, but for sure in September that that should be solved. But the question is not from, I think, from the institutions. It's what will happen with the state of the economy, with the inflation, with the, the war in Ukraine. How could he handle to stabilize the prices? This is absolutely uh, crucial because everything happening now, it's not how to combine some uh, result of political parties. It's just how to make functioning and keep functioning a country of 67 million inhabitants and a major player in Europe. The first necessity for Macron is to secure a majority in the parliament. And so he will, I think he can make some compromise with the uh, center-right parties. Today we talked about the French legislative election with our guest, Thibault Goblin. Thank you very much, Thibault, for uh, accepting our invitation. Thank you very much for inviting me. And thank you, uh, our distinguished listeners. And see you next time in the Votes and Seas podcast. All the best.